Hey, what's up guys? Sir Aminon here, and welcome to another episode of Road to 1000 Dueling Brick Rating. Uh, this episode is going to be a little bit different from what you might have come to expect from this series. It's not going to be fundamentally different, it's just that the quality of games on Dueling Brick Rating for me have personally not been very great. Uh, you guys might notice in the uh, corner of the screen, or the corner of the Dueling Book gameplay, where my profile picture normally is, is where I keep track of my record and rating and stuff. And from the last episode, there is quite a big gap as far as both the record and the rating is concerned. And that is simply because, uh, again, a lot of the games have just been not very good quality as far as, you know, disconnections are concerned or, you know, people quitting early or just one-sided gameplay in general, uh, as well as me messing around with decks that were not worth testing. I just wanted to test some things and uh, sometimes it just didn't work out. Uh, so yeah, for the games today, uh, they're not going to be the best games, uh, but I'm actually going to showcase two separate matches because there's at least one particular moment in each that I would like to highlight. Uh, once again, these are not necessarily going to be the closest or most competitive games, but uh, I've been playing over the weekend and like I just haven't been able to find anything that good. That's why you guys didn't really see an upload for this series over the weekend. Uh, I did plan to upload something on Sunday, but... Um, yeah, that just didn't end up happening or working out for me. Uh, I've also been busy with school, you know, the usual. <laughs> and you're probably going to be seeing this at night. Uh, that is simply because, you know, during the weekdays, I just can't really record until the night. And I don't really want to wait until Tuesday to upload this. So uh, that is when you are going to be seeing this. So I know a lot of you guys, like, <clears throat> would prefer seeing these during the daytime. And for a lot of you guys, still, it wouldn't make that much of a difference. But I uh, just thought I'd throw that out there for you guys in case you were wondering why that is. But this time, we're actually going to be on Dragon Link. And for the first match, it's going to be against uh, True Draco, which um, really isn't much of a match. It's more so just how to play out of like one particularly awkward position. Um, like this, this match really is is not a match I would feature otherwise, but it's just something that I thought I would showcase in case you guys uh, were wondering how to play out of a particularly weird spot. Uh, but the second match is going to be a mirror. So that will be a little bit more interesting. I, I, don't, I don't want to say particularly interactive, but uh, it, it'll be, you know, a little bit more indicative of what you can come to expect if you play this deck on ladder right about now, especially if you are still in the lower rated section like I am currently as of um, as of this gameplay, because uh, I wouldn't consider 550 rated to be high rated. That's pretty low rated. But uh, yeah, we're still working our way up because uh, I'm not like out here grinding 24-7, just playing whenever I can. But yeah, we're just going to go ahead and stop rambling. We're just going to go go ahead and uh, get started here. So this first match, like I said, is going to be up against uh, True Draco. Uh, so yeah, not really anything um, too special because they don't really play hand traps. So you don't really have to play through all the disruption. If you win the die roll like I did, then you'll have a pretty easy time. Now, the awkward thing that I was mentioning and alluding to earlier was what happens if you draw Phalanx. Um, so that is something that you know I figured I'd showcase in case you guys uh, aren't aware of how to play when you draw Phalanx. Most of you guys probably do by now, but uh, just in case. Uh, yeah, so we opened Broken otherwise, aside from the Phalanx. Uh, so yeah, we just go ahead and Chaos Base away the uh, White Dragon Wyvern Bracer. Again, it doesn't really, it's not really a big deal if you draw like a Chaos Base with a BB Dragon, it's just you get one less card out of it. Um, but overall, it's not that, you know, it's not that problematic. Uh, we draw Nibiru off the Chaos Base, uh, and then we go ahead Go ahead and link it to Striker. We trigger both of our monsters. Not really anything too suspect here. Grabbing White as well as Boot Sector. <clears throat> gonna summon our Wyvern Burster. And then we're gonna go into uh, Romulus to grab Ravine. Because uh, I am still testing playing Ravine. Some people have decided to cut it. Um, because normally the thing you send with Ravine a lot of the time is Absa Router, which switches Tracer. And Tracer Access is cool because uh, it allows you to get, you know, it, it's like another way for a Tuner Extender to be able to play past like Imprimer Ash on this. Um, because like the way you normally you know get past disruptions on this as long as it's not gamma is you have a tuner extender to be able to go fiber and you can still full combo well mostly full combo from that from there um and the boot sector launch obviously you're gonna have access to like in the vast majority of games so having tracer access essentially means tuner access uh, so ravine is like another nice spot if you like draw divine lance or in this case if you draw phalanx uh, so yeah, the way that you play out of this is that you have, if you have any way to get like another dragon monster on the field, um, or any dragon that can make striker, uh, use Romulus's other effect, where if a dragon monster is special summoned from the extra deck to his end it points to, you can special summon a dragon or winged beast uh, from your hand in defense. Uh, but then it can't be used as like material. Uh, so yeah, you go ahead and do that. And then you turn the Romulus into Linkross, and then you summon two tokens, 
and then for pure you just do your synchro stuff so uh yeah that, that's like basically how it's just how you play out of a uh, drawing phalanx if you have the extension um but you could also like go fiber summon the side of your hand but like this is uh this is how you can still guarantee that you make a herald uh, and then like you can still play uh you know pretty nicely from this position because you can go fiber afterwards so like, there's multiple ways you can do it but this is like one of the ways that i figured in case you guys aren't aware of the play uh, that is a neat little trick you can have up your sleeve uh, but yeah we're just gonna go ahead and go through the combo here uh, i still am playing rocket synchron a lot of people also dropped this but uh, i just like having the uh the extra rocket name and i feel like it's um a lot better in cases than like something like magna or silver because um, those those do have their own utility uh, in terms of like just having their own effects um, as well as a uh, silver can also crash with winda that was like something that um was more popular back when invoked it always like meta but it can still come up now in the uh, dogmatica invoked matchup and like Magna is still okay just to be able to like be a feel clear if you want to like use it with striker to like clear boards and stuff uh, but i figured that rocket synchron is good because a lot of the time off of halk i find myself not summoning red rose um if you don't have to um so like having the extra rocket and grave is nice to be able to just uh use boot if you manage to keep it up um though those cases come up not super often but it's enough to like you know it's, it's enough to be worth mentioning or accounting for i suppose uh, so i get rid of the beer because i figured that like you know if they're on zero extra deck it's probably monarch or draco because uh, lithium just took a second in the remote duel invitational uh so i, I thought it was going to be monarch actually uh but yeah we grab our um uh, we actually had Love Unary, I believe, so we grabbed Red MD. So like, I realized that, I think I realized, yeah, that um, I could have just searched Red MD by summoning Black Metal instead of having Brotar, but having Brotar in Graves is also really good. Uh, granted, I could have gotten it off Seal, but it wouldn't have mattered. Uh, here, I like debate between Striker, or sorry, uh, Synchron and Tracer, and it ends up not mattering because I still have Boot Sector, so it really didn't matter what I brought back with Pissy versus what I summoned off Boot Sector because it's literally the same thing. Um, for some reason, I thought it mattered. It, it didn't. Um, so yeah, we summon Levianir, we rip a card. Uh, what did we rip here? I actually did not watch this replay. Um, okay, so we ripped an Apocalypse. Or, sorry, was that a Crackdown or was that a second Apocalypse? Hang on. I think I checked the logs real fast. Uh, it was a Crackdown. Okay, <laughs> so that was uh, that's actually fine. And then Pissy brings back Tracer. Again, this could have been the Synchron if I had done it the other way. Didn't really matter. Then we go Protector. Then we go into Seal. Uh, then we go uh, boost sector. Um, yeah, I, we didn't actually even have to do the uh, striker effect there. We could have just um, turned the striker and the Hulk into well or protector whelp, and then just do pisty. But um, yeah, it wouldn't have mattered that much because we had to do that play anyways. Yeah, I, I think it would have been fine. Oh, we would have had a, one of the guard dragons left, so uh, we'd have had to burn a red MD. That's why I wanted to do it this way, right? Okay, never mind uh yeah this is still okay so yeah we go into union carrier and like it's at this point where i realized well buster lock literally does nothing against this deck so i figured i'd just go for something a little bit more valuable uh so i decide after going for savage that i'm going to equip uh absa router i do believe uh i also thought about uh safer um, but i was like i might just summon safer off of seal it doesn't really matter which way i do it um but yeah this way i have a guaranteed rocket follow-up and then i have like safer to bring back levy if i want to um so yeah all in all pretty pretty decent uh picks up a guard card demise return our opponent does uh so they're gonna activate a copy of duality uh and instead of grabbing desires they actually grab an apocalypse i thought for sure at this point that that meant that um there was a draco monster in hand to try and break the board um and here's where i realized i didn't put counters on the savage so i just do that right now uh but they probably should have just taken the desires um because like at this point, like the only thing in their hand that's worth negating is the um, is the demise. So I'm just gonna obviously hold it for that. Uh, so they scoop, and then game two is literally nothing worth mentioning at all. I just wanted to showcase that game one, to be honest. Uh, here, my opponent like pops the border, and then like just summons a Draco monster to have erupt up, which I mean I guess is fine. But like border is also like pretty decent in a lot of cases because they're only going to be going into links so they basically only have a one monster effect to activate um and if they can't get like a levy in here uh pretty early then it's tough for them to really do a whole lot um so i feel like border just summoning it would have been a lot better than like this kind of stuff but 
Uh, yeah, I just have Pancrotops, and they preemptively flip uh, Erupts, so uh, I just chain Pancrotops, and then uh, he chains Maiden as well as uh, Waterfall. So at this point, I'm like, alright, there's just actually just no disruption here. So uh, yeah, it's basically just a full combo. Uh, luckily, we don't have to sit through this gameplay because uh, my opponent scoops. So yeah, again, not too much great gameplay uh, on this end, but it is just worth mentioning for that game one uh, because I thought it was uh, you know decent enough to look at what happens if you draw Phalanx. So uh, we're going to move on to the second game now. Uh, so this match is up against the Mirror. So this is going to be uh, you know more of what you would expect if you were to play this deck on rated right about now. Uh, granted, given that you're like you're at a decent like high rated or rating, uh, which I'm still not. Hence, I'm running into a lot of rogues still. But uh, you know, again, I'm just not really playing like super, super insanely much now. Our opening hand is actually bonkers. Like this is like one of the best five card opening hands you could ask for. Uh, we have multiple extenders: dragon extender, dragon extender, tuner extender, tuner extender. So uh, we can play through a lot of different hand traps here. Our opponent drew double nib uh, as the only hand trap, and then uh, not actually that great of an opener there. Um, so yeah, we open really, really well, so we get to trigger Striker, Metal, and Octo, of course. So we grab double searches for Red MD as well as Boot Sector. And then we go into, of course, Romulus, Chain Blocking. Uh, we draw a Gamma, which is, you know, it, it's an additional card. I can't complain about, like, one dead card uh, when everything else is, like, insane. So this hand is, like, just broken. Uh, yeah, we go ahead and equip Phalanx. Uh, Phalanx summon itself, and then go into Link Cross. Uh, I've started comboing on the left side. Uh, like I thought about it, I'm like I should combo on the left side because Union Carrier points right. And the way that the Guard Dragons operate is that they point leftwards, so you're always gonna have Tracers stuck. If you do it on the right side, like you saw in game the game against Draco, uh, the Tracer is gonna be in the middle of the zone. Whereas if you do it this way, the Tracer is gonna be in the left zone. That way, um, you know when it's under seal, like you're gonna be able to, uh, you know go for the uh, like savage um, like in that zone or like any zone you want really but then you can like go carrier like on in the middle instead of like all the way to the right I'm not sure if that quite made sense it's hard to kind of explain without actually having a visual or, or visual aid but hopefully that made sense but Link cross is gonna summon out two level one tokens uh, then we go into the uh, the marcher and then we bring back phalanx and their opponent drops the beer here understandable. I could have gone straight Herald if I wanted to, honestly, because my hand was good enough to do it, but um, like forcing out N Nibiru here is also like not that bad. Um, and I actually do have a way into uh, Herald, actually, uh, even still. Uh, so yeah, we follow up with an e Uh You could argue I shouldn't do this because it gives away that I'm playing Gamma, um, but I mean, this isn't like that much of a weird tech or anything. Um, it's becoming a lot more common just because two new extenders are broken when you exactly get Nibiru here, or if you get stopped on Romulus, of course. Uh, so yeah, we go into Hulk, and then Hulk summons a uh, uh, Red Rose. So like last time, I summoned a Synchrom, which is what I would like normally do in a spot like this. But my my plan is to actually use World Legacy Guard Dragon to bring back the Black Metal, so I can go into Herald with those two. And then uh, Red Rose will trigger to summon White Rose. Uh, but my opponent actually scoops as soon as uh, I reveal the uh, World Legacy Guard Dragon because uh, my opponent is very aware that this is just full combo. And I had like ways to follow up. Even if I didn't have... Uh, if it was like, just a regular monster reborn, I still would have been able to combo even without the um, the effect to move the LP. So like that hand was just actually just insane. Uh, game 2 though, uh, our opponent uh, draws a pretty interesting hand. Uh, they're on the Violin Cube Smoke Grenade package still. Uh, and you notice I'm on the Red Rose stuff. Uh, I I'm like still testing between the two. Like it's 50-50 right now because the Smoke Grenade is definitely insane. But um, Red Rose Dragon, I like the Rose Dragons a little bit more as far as like when you draw parts of the engine. Like they just feel nice, uh, especially White Rose. I actually like drawing White Rose sometimes. Um, but yeah, opponent also drew only really one actual way to get a dragon onto the board. Um, and I actually don't even think this is combo. Uh, yeah, they're going to start off with a quick launch. Uh, our hand has two hand traps, but Joel actually doesn't do anything in this hand, or against his hand. Because um, that's the only time that my opponent's going to actually add this entire turn. So, uh, funnily enough, this Joel is actually going to be just a straight neg, like neg one. Um, I mean, it's always a neg one, but you, you know what I mean. Uh, so, Striker going to add Tracer back. 
And then, uh, let's see. So Sector summons Tracer. I, I was thinking at this point, my opponent didn't normal summon because it started with quick launch. So I was like waiting for just a normal summon of anything to go into Hulk and I was going to gamma it. But then instead my opponent goes for a smoke grenade and then like tries to pop the smoke grenade. And I'm like, well, they're just going for like savage past with like a hand rip. So I'm like, I might as well just gamma this. Because, um, like, if my opponent chose to do this over summoning uh, Fiber, then my opponent's hand probably isn't that strong. Uh, you know, and it's true. My opponent just had a... Just had a Violin Cube. And, like, the way you would play out of this, like, if you want... If, like, I didn't have Gamma, like, you could... You could... I guess you could go for this and, like, rip a card if you really want to resolve Smoke Grenade, but... Um, honestly, just summoning Cube, going for your Hulk... And then summoning Phalanx and then making Link Cross and doing the whole play from there. You'll still eventually be able to get back to the Tracer and then do the Smoke Grenade play anyway. So, like, it was probably better to just try and go for the full combo. Because, like, Hulk by itself still is a combo. It's just that, you know, you don't get you don't get the luxuries of um, having, like, your tuner and, like, ensuring that you make Herald before you go Fiber, obviously. Um, but, yeah, I'm going to obviously Gamma the Tracer at this point. Because I'm like, it's evident that my opponent's not going to be able to do a whole lot after this. Um, plus, like, I don't want my hand ripped. Um, like, that's really, really not good. Uh, so, yeah, our opponent's gonna pass. And you can see our hand's actually not that good. Like, it's good enough to combo, but it's very fragile. And my opponent does have a Ghost Soaker. So, I actually do manage to play out of this, even though my opponent does have Ogre here. So, normal summon Phalanx, that's the, literally the only thing I can do. Uh, grab Striker. Striker effect adds a Sector. And then... I activate, of course, the Warlocks of Guard Dragon to bring back the Phalanx, because, you know, there's actually just nothing else I can do from this position. There's, like, only one line of play that's possible. Uh, so from here, here's where, like, you can deviate a little bit. Like, you can go Romulus to add Ravine, which I briefly considered, because, like, you can Ravine, um, pitch the Spare Warlocks of Guard Dragon to send Router and then add Tracer. But I'm like, mm, like, I don't want, uh... I just felt like that was a little bit vulnerable when I could just go straight into uh, straight into Hulk. I, I, I didn't really see a real reason to do that. And, like, Ogre is becoming a little bit more popular. Uh, and Ravine does lose to Ogre there. So, um, here, if I do get Ogred, which I do get Ogred on the Hulk here. I like how I said game one, I was comboing on the, <laughs> on the left side and I just switched back to the right side immediately. Like, it was something I thought of in that game and then I just forgot immediately afterward. But... Uh, yeah, I get uh, Ogre on the Hulk here, and then here I'm thinking, okay, so what can I do from this spot? So like my targets are like the targets for Dragon Tuners to summon off Hulk are uh, Synchron if you play it, the Red Rose, the Violin Cube. Or, well, no, it's not a Dragon Tuner, but like, the just the Tuner targets. Um, you could summon, you could summon Gamma. Uh, you could summon like the Dragon Buster. So it's like not a lot of really good targets, especially when you get Ogre to like. When, because that cuts off your link cross axis, right? So I'm thinking, okay, so since I played the Synchron, which is really fortunate for me, I can actually go into a copy of Striker Dragon here. I can Striker add back the Synchron by using its effect. And now that puts a Darken Hand for my Chaos Space to be live. So go ahead and use Chaos Space to grab the uh, Wyvern Burster. And from here, here's where I can actually do the backup line of the Romulus because I didn't use it before. Because remember, I was deliberating between like Romulus and Fiber. This is where like you get rewarded um, if you you know play around Ogre there. Because if I got Ogred on the Romulus, like I just didn't have a play. Like I, I would have been stuck with a Romulus and then like a Sector with like a, like no World like Cigar Dragon would have not been in hand. It would have been the Chaos Space, uh, which had no uh, discard outlets, of course. Uh, gonna go ahead and just pop off here. Uh, and you'll also notice I am playing the uh, three Striker Dragon. This is like. Um, this is like not the reason that I play three striker dragon, but it, it just so happens that this, you know, is a convenient scenario where uh, strike third striker definitely came up here. Um, whereas if this was like uh, one of the other fuck spots, like uh, some people are playing uh, Soyuja now, uh, Delindris is one. Uh, some people are playing Appaloosa, which I find to be kind of uh, kind of crazy. Um, but like if it was any of those spots, I wouldn't be able to do the play that I did um, in this particular fashion. Uh, so yeah, like now that we have access to what we want, uh, we have um, Chaos Space to draw us, and we actually draw into a quick launch, which is, of course, crazy. 
Um, although it didn't really matter because uh, we could have just gone for, like I said, the Romulus play here and then add ourselves the Wyvern Burster and the Dragon Ravine. And we could go Ravine pitch the Wyvern Burster to send Router, like I mentioned before, and then Router grab Tracer. Um, and then we have, and then he knows I have Sector, so that is essentially full combo, especially because I have Guard Dragon still. And I have Link Cross still, so I have literally every tool plus Quick Launch that I ripped off the Chaos Space. So, like, even if I, again, even if I didn't have this, I would still have full combo. But yeah, that's kind of just the way that you can play out of like some awkward scenarios. It's not really, this episode isn't as much showcasing like interactive back and forth gameplay because this it certainly wasn't it, but this is more just showcasing what you can do in kind of weirder spots. So hopefully it was still informative and entertaining for you guys. So that's going to do it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you all enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave a like as well as any thoughts or feedback in the comment section down below. Uh, feel free to subscribe for more informative and competitive video content. If you want to, you can follow me on Discord, Twitter, or Twitch, all the links in the description as always. And once again, thank you so much for watching, and until next time, I'll catch you in the next video. See you guys!